Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist and on this channel I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. So if you like the sounds of that, be sure to hit that subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up and let me know in the comments below where you hail from because it does matter when it comes to curating videos better suited towards you guys. I have folks from all over the world, all over the world. I have people in the Philippines, I have people in the UK, the US, Canada, Australia, you name it, you guys are here, and I want to thank you so much for being here. The channel has grown enormously, and if you are new, hi, hello, <laughs> how are you? Hopefully it's not too intense for you, but please ask questions, don't be shy. I may make a whole video about it, especially if it's a question that I keep on getting asked repeatedly. This video is a question that was asked by multiple viewers on the channel and it is regards to the soil amendment series and this is a video all about pumice. So while I've never used pumice, I am in love with the sound of pumice and therefore I have added it to the Amazon shop. I want it in my life and I already have some on the way. I couldn't find any locally and that is one of the downfalls of pumice is that it's not the easiest product to find but i'm super impressed with the overall properties of the product so thank you to all the people that suggested doing a video on this there were so many of you and i love all of all of you for it because i just didn't even come to my mind as a viable option so what exactly is pumice well it's a product that is born out of superheated earth for lack of a better term it's basically whipped up volcanic glass and because of this it has a ton of tiny bubbles in it it is actually relatively unprocessed which makes it very good for the environment there's no secondary heated kneading there's literally just making big rocks into little rocks and that's how you get pumice this is different than perlite because remember perlite we actually have to expose it to some heat to cause it to expand and pop like rice, rice krispies so pumice is actually super ideal for outdoor scenarios especially if you have a he heavy clay soil it doesn't degrade or compact over time like vermiculite or perlite would do it has a very reasonable cation exchange capacity which isn't too high but also isn't too low at 73 milli equivalents per 100 grams. So that's kind of, that's higher than uh, perlite, but it's lower than vermiculite. But there's nothing wrong with that. It's right in the range of where we want it. This higher milli equivalents per 100 grams at 73 is solely due to the fact that compared to the lower range, which would be perlite at three to four milligrams, milli equivalents per 100 grams, is completely due to the fact that perlite all the uh, divots or holes are actually located on the outside of the product whereas with pumice those holes or those micro pores are located throughout the entire product itself because remember it's the whole thing is blown up with air bubbles porosity i'm going to give this a rating of 9 out of 10 it is very similar to perlite but even better than perlite because it's a mix of small pores and large pores and the fact that it doesn't degrade over time means that it it's just it's elevated when it comes to porosity and drainage the the ph is completely neutral at a seven which is again exactly what we want when we have a soil additive especially if we're not looking to change our ph of our soil substrate in general because it doesn't degrade because it's not organic or contains zero organic material in it it also won't get a lower or a higher ph over time so because perlite and pumice are so similar and they would be used in the exact same way in a soil system. I think it's a very fair to do a video where we're comparing perlite to pumice. So let's just jump into the differences between the two. First off, perlite is way cheaper. And that probably has to do with the fact that it degrades over time, meaning you're continually going to have to replace it. Because you'll not have to replace pumice as often until it literally crushes down. It would make sense that the people who sell it would charge a bit more because you're not gonna be coming back every year for more pumice. The other thing that is a huge difference is that pumice sinks in water and perlite floats in water. 
So why does that matter? Well, if you've ever put too much perlite in your soil and you've watered, you will have noticed that the perlite will actually float to the surface and kind of reside on the surface of your soil. So pumice isn't going to do that, but if you fully saturate or you saturated it enough that there's a more of a liquid inside of the potting setup, the pumice will drop to the bottom and out of the soil profile. So that's something to keep in mind when watering and adding this product. If you're watering um, properly and you're not saturating or you're not bottom watering and actually putting it in a bucket where you're submerging the soil all the way, then you're not going to run into this as much, but it's something to keep in mind if you are a bottom waterer or someone that likes to completely saturate the entire soil system because you will drop that pumice to the bottom and therefore you're gonna lose the properties of porosity, which is kind of the main purpose of using pumice. So it is dusty, just like perlite. You're not going to escape the dust with either one of these products. And one thing I did find was a cost comparison. So I wrote that down here. And I think this is important to talk about because, um, I mean, it's high. So the cost of pumice is $24 for 3.5 liters of pumice, which is $6.86 per liter. And then perlite is $43 for 20 liters, and that works out to around $2.50 per liter. So it is a third of the cost for perlite compared to pumice. So it's something to keep in mind when you're deciding whether or not to use pumice in your system. But overall, I think it is a really good product. Um, the barriers to entry obviously are the cost of the product. However, once you have your hands on it, it seems like it's going to last a long time. It will make your pots a little bit heavier because it is a rock, uh, a lightweight rock compared to most, but a rock nonetheless. It is great porosity. It has a very neutral pH. It has a reasonable cation exchange capacity. And overall, it sounds like it's actually a really good product. I know that some viewers do use pumice really religiously. I'm assuming it's very easily located in your area, hence why you are using it. But I do think it is superior to perlite. Now, do I think that you should wait to get pumice, wait to plant or start a garden just till you can afford or you can get your hands on pumice? No, I think you should use perlite. Using pumice as a reason or the hang up to start something, then don't let that be the case. I don't think it's an absolute miracle product, but I do think it's probably from the research I've done, one of my favorite soil amendments. That's all I have for you guys today on pumice. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please let me know in the comments below if you use pumice, if you have used pumice, if you liked it, if you didn't like it. I know who you are, the ones that absolutely love it. Let me know if this video helped you out at all or it just simply confused you. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.